The Kabul Beauty School was basically birthed out of an idea from myself and some other women from New York about empowering women through the art of hairdressing. I was in Afghanistan and I saw um, these salons that were just beginning to emerge from the war. It was just 2002. And when I walked into the salon, they had nothing. I mean, it was, it was a salon about the size of a bathroom and it had one broken mirror across the top and they had huge like hedge clipper scissors. They were doing perms with sticks and, and I watched how they wanted, they'd been enclosed in their houses for so long, their salons had gone underground. It's like coming out of prison, you know, just emerging from the rubble. Most people, when they think about Afghanistan and they think about a beauty school or a beauty salon, the first question that people will say to me is like, aren't they always covered up? And I'm like, yeah, you have no idea what's underneath that burqa, or you don't know what's underneath that veil. But we came in with Western makeup techniques, thinking that we've just, this is the best thing in the world. Oh, they're just going to, you know, really love this Western ideas. They looked at us like we were out of our mind. Why would we want our makeup to look like that? And you know, we're like, no, no, you got to do this real light, blend, natural, natural. And they're like going, you look like you just got out of bed. And so in first class, we got rid of the Western makeup and brought in Afghan makeup. And we brought in Afghan wedding hair. Makeup and hair are taken much more serious for them than it is for us. So they glitz up. We're talking big hair, lots of makeup rhinestones, glitter. I mean, I always say they try to out glitter each other. Glitter was flying everywhere. Everybody always asks me, how does a hairdresser wind up being in Afghanistan? And I, and I would tell people that I started out doing disaster relief. And when I got to Afghanistan, <laughs> you know, you see all that hair that these you know foreigners had not been able to have a haircut for three, four, five months. That was true disaster relief <laughs> hairdresser style. You know, people would say, how did this book thing come about? I was writing emails and I documented everything. And there'd be times that my heart was breaking. You know, one of the girls lost her baby or, you know, somebody got beat at school that day from their husband or something. And I just wrote it all down because I literally wanted my customers in the States to, um, to live this with me. So one of my customers said, we just love your emails. She hands me this folder and she had taken all my emails and it was this big thick folder. And I, I was going through them, reading them, thinking I do not want to forget. So every day, whether it was just a little note, I just kept track of what happened. And so that's basically how this was birthed, the Cabo Beauty School, the book. It's, it's, it's the women, it's, you know, this is just a window into the lives of the Afghan women. I nickname Afghanistan Manistan because you always feel as if you're surrounded by crowds of men. It's painful to go out and see so few women on the street. It's always a relief to get away from that testosterone. The school provides a safe haven for my students and the women who work in the salon. We go through family crises, celebration and hardships together. Because I'm a foreigner, I bring up subjects that my Afghan teachers would not. We talk about birth control or birth spacing, sex, our husbands, and the lack of sensitivity and other taboo subjects. My girls love it. They laugh and they teach each other. We just get as silly as any other women. And this creates a bond. I love Afghanistan. My heart will always be there no matter where the rest of me settles. I'm sure that no other place will feel like home in the way that Afghanistan did from the moment that I set foot there. I will continue to bring attention to the women there and help them in any way I can. And someday I hope that I can return to my bittersweet cobble.